How are y'all doing today? It's your host, Zach Shoes Shoemaker, and today I'm joined by a first team all SoCon selection. Now, his name is all over the Wofford record books, where he currently ranks in as the fourth all time leading assist man, seventh all time in threes, ninth in points. And this just goes along with being top 10 in plus minus win shares, field goals, and minutes. Now, he's rejoined the coach that coached him his first two years at Wofford and coached Mike Young out of Virginia Tech. And that's Storm Murphy. You're heading out to Virginia Tech. You've been with the team for a little bit now. I know you're taking a week off now, but take us through how you enjoying the team so far and just how excited you'll be a part of Virginia Tech. Yeah, no, it's been great. I'm super excited. Um, you know, the whole recruitment process to to go back with Coach Young and um, a couple of the other guys that I know so well and, and played with like Keve. And, um, you know, so I was super excited and just to go out there and meet the team and, and get used to the guys and the, um, the area has been great. I've loved it so far. Um, so, yeah, it's been a real treat or a blessing. Now, we have to start off discussing your name. I know you have Storm and that's a name that honestly fits pretty well for basketball players, but it's not the most typical name you see. So you got to take us the backstory behind this. Like, why is this your name and what's the story behind that? Yeah. Uh, so my name, it came from my mom's maiden name. Uh, it was her maiden name, Storm. Um, but, you know, I was also born in January uh, during a storm uh, up here in Wisconsin. And so uh, it kind of fits and then just kind of fits in my personality uh, and way I, way I play on the court. So, um, yeah, you're right. It definitely fits. And, and I've enjoyed it so far. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you grew up out there in Wisconsin. So take us to that. Like, what was it like growing up out there? Yeah. Um, Midwest, um, Wisconsin, super close to UW, Madison. Um, yeah, it was great. Great family. Um, one sister um, lived close to my grandparents, uh, was just brought up in a great home and um, had, a, had a great you know, childhood of sports with, with a bunch of different sports and a great community here in Middleton of, of competitive athletes. And so that really, you know, pushed me growing up um, competitively in sports and, um, you know, really drove my work ethic um, and the competitive spirit I have uh, to this day. And so um, still got lifelong friends here that I keep in contact with some other friends that have gone to play uh, in college. And so uh, it's great to just, you know, look back at, you know, Middleton and, and the middle school, the high school days, and just see um, the progress and the growth that's happened throughout the years. So has basketball always been the sport that you've loved or was it another sport you enjoyed prior to loving basketball? Yeah, I would say like the main three sports that I played were probably football, basketball, and baseball uh, growing up. Um, there was a, there's a point actually when I lived in Minnesota for two years and actually picked up hockey, which was in the winter. So I had to make a decision. Uh, when I moved to Wisconsin, whether I was going to stick with hockey or basketball. And so um, I think I uh, made the right choice going with basketball. So walk us through that. Obviously, you said you moved out to Minnesota for a little bit. What led to that move and what, what caused you guys to go out there for a couple of years? Yeah, so that was primarily just because of my dad's work, uh, an opportunity. Um, and it was great. Uh, and then uh, I think that was actually really kind of where I picked up basketball for the first first time about third grade and then moved back to Wisconsin. Um, and yeah kind of chose basketball full-time and um, fell in love with the game. At what point would you say you really kind of decide, okay, this is the sport I really want to pursue. Like, this is the thing I want to try playing at the next level college-wise and maybe even professionally someday too. Yeah, I definitely think I had aspirations, uh, you know, for college basketball and professional um, basketball as a kid, you know, mm -hmm. fourth, fifth grade, everyone, you know, dreams of that. Um, I think when it, when it really started maybe becoming real um, that I'd actually have an opportunity um, to maybe play in the college level um, was I think maybe my my sophomore year of high school um, and my junior year uh, my freshman year actually I played on the freshman team I didn't even make JV I didn't make varsity and so um, that was kind of a, a good blessing disguise for me though gave me a chip on my shoulder and um, made me really hungry to prove myself um, just here in Middleton with the high school and so um, once I got to my sophomore year I made varsity play quite a bit. And then my junior year and senior year were, were big time years for me. And so I think that junior year, I was really like, man, I think I have an opportunity to maybe go play at the collegiate level. That's what makes you unique because there's more and more guys that are starting to figure out that 
you know, I might not have to have the super long arms, I might not have to be super tall, I might not have to be athletic and quick. Like you can still make it, but that's obviously not an easy thing to do. Like you don't have too many advantages. You're right on six foot. You're obviously not the tallest point guard. You're not the quickest mm-hmm. one, but you've still managed to have an incredible, one of the great all-time players at Wofford. Now you're going to be able to go play at a high level, possible contending championship team this upcoming year. So how have you been able to do that? Like, how have you put aside all the things that's not really been beneficial, helpful to you and kind of still be able to have this successful career so far? Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, you know, at an early age and whatnot, I, I realized that, that I wasn't mm-hmm. going to be the most athletic. I wasn't going to be the, the tallest dude, the longest guy and um, the most naturally gifted. And so mm-hmm. um, I was going to have to work extra hard and, and find certain areas and skills and things that I was going to be able to excel at that were going to help me get in the door um, and get opportunities to play. And so, um, yeah, I think, you know, listening uh, like a sponge to coaches, and trainers, um, you know, picking up on little videos and, and watching older guys film and seeing what skills they were able to do and stuff and trying to just adapt those, adopt them and um, implement them into my game. Uh, I think that really kind of pushed my work ethic and um, yeah, realizing, you know, I wasn't going to be the most uh, naturally gifted guy um, gave me an edge uh, and made me hungry to, to try and figure it all out myself, you know, and I've had great coaches and great people along the way. um, But at the end of the day, you know, I kind of had to put my head down, get to the gym early, um, put the work in, get extra reps and, um, anytime I'm in the gym, you know, whether it's a workout, um, or whatnot, just wanted to, to go harder than the next guy and be the hardest working guy. And, um, I think something that also has helped me along the way are the intangibles, you know, talking personality, being able to lead, uh, step into a gym, um, and just get comfortable early on and quickly. And so, um, I think that's helped me, um, uh, along the years. And obviously you've learned and you, that's why you're a great shooter too, is for guys that don't have all the tangibles, different skill sets that's naturally God gifted to you. You have to perfect that shot, at least get pretty darn as per, close to perfect as you possibly can at shooting. And you've done pretty much that now. You saw over 40% for three years, I believe, in a row now. So when did you realize that? Like, when did you start saying, you know, I really need to lock in on this three-point game. I really need to become a great shooter. And when did you really start emphasizing that aspect of your game? Yeah, I think that really was my freshman year um, and sophomore year at Wofford. Because uh, I think in high school, uh, with, with high school basketball and AU, I was more – um, you know, dynamic, trying to, to get in the lane, beat guys off the dribble, make plays, um, score when I can, um, but just be that quick guard who can, who can, you know, wreak havoc for defenses. And so um, freshman year and sophomore year at Wofford, you know, I, the game started to change, slow down a little bit, uh, become more system based. And so um, I really realized, you know, these shots that I'm going to have are going to be kickouts, going to be wide open threes. Um, I'm going to have to get them off quicker uh, and I'm going to have to make them at a high clip. And so, uh, you know, I think, Focusing on that, being around great shooters has really helped me realize that. Um, and yeah, there's, there's, you know, always been uh, growth that my, my shots always had to go through and, and I've always been learning um, what makes it better. So let's head back into that high school career. So you obviously said you don't even play varsity as a freshman in that first year. So someone would have told you though, before you even entered high school, like heading into that season, heading into your freshman year, if someone would have said you're eventually going to become a division one player, and possibly down the road, then you're going to possibly go out there and play at a high level division one program like Virginia Tech. Could you ever imagine, like, would that ever have crossed your mind? Honestly, no, I don't think so. I don't think I would have, you know, believed it. I thought it would have been a dream, uh, just something way out in the future. First and foremost, I would have had to grow and get a lot bigger still as a freshman. I was so tiny. Um, but yeah, you know, looking back, it's really cool to, to just see the, the progress and, um, all the things, the miracles, the things, the blessings that have happened to just get me to this point. And so, um, yeah, I definitely don't think I would have believed anyone, but uh, I would have been excited and motivated by, by some comment like that. When you are going through this, as you said, though, still it's a dream of anyone that plays this game, or hopefully if you are playing the game, your dream is to play college basketball at some level. So for you being a guy that's not playing varsity as a freshman, you go throughout the whole career too. You're not getting the, all the high rankings. You're not getting all these stars. You're not getting high level programs offering you. Like, how did you take that? Like, were you ever getting down yourself? Did that struggle with you? Like, how did you handle that? Yeah, I think at times I definitely did struggle with that, you know, real, you know, kind of just wondering why, why aren't I getting this look or, or whatnot? Cause I, I think I'm better than this guy or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, 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 faith is super important to me. And, you know, I really just had to trust God and say, um, you know what, I can't control these things that are external. I can control my game. I can control how hard I work, how hard I play day in and day out. And, um, 
there's really no button I can press to just flip the switch and have everything come to me from the outside. So that's, that's God's doing. And, um, you know, my, after my junior year, uh, into my senior year, uh, I was playing on a local Madison team here in Wisconsin for AU and, um, you know, kind of at that same point where I was struggling and I was wondering what's going to happen. I want to play division one basketball. Um, I was at a tournament in Indiana and, uh, the Mac urban fire, uh, coaches actually saw me play a game and, um, invited me to a practice kind of an audition, a tryout. And so, um, I talked to my parents, I was like, you know what, I got to do this. This is a great opportunity for me. Um, and, and it can only help me. And so, um, yeah, got to go practice and, and work out with some great, great talented players, Jordan Poole, Io Desumu, um, Taylor Horn Tucker, and uh, go be around great guys like that. And that really kind of helped, um, you know, blow everything up for me and, and get my my offer. I'm not sure if we go back where exactly you would have been ranked now. We see how everyone panned out, but obviously you would have been somewhere, rather it be the top 100 or top 200, somewhere you would probably would have done ranking. So at that point in time, they like, come your senior or junior season, like, did you start feeling like you could have been this good? Did you start feeling like, you know, I truly do believe I can be one of these top guys. Like I'm an elite player. Is that I'm not getting attention or did that really all come to you once you got to college? No, I definitely think, yeah. Uh, even amidst, you know, not getting all the attention in high school, mm -hmm. junior, senior year, I think I definitely believe, oh my goodness, I could go play at these schools. I could go play um, mm -hmm. at, in these top conferences um, and whatnot. And I, I think I did believe and you got to know, have confidence of how good you are. That was huge for me. And um, yeah, I think looking back, it, uh, you know, it's crazy that didn't have any of that attention. And here we are four or five years later and um, it's all kind of coming into fruition. And this is kind of a huge jump you have. You're, as you say, your freshman year, you don't even play on varsity. Then all of a sudden, you go to your upperclassmen years. Your junior year, you start getting team MVP. You get all state. You get all these different awards coming in. You guys have a great record. You're averaging you know, almost 20 points a game. So take us through that. Like, what led to that jump? Like, why did you go from just being a typical player to now emerging as really a Division one type prospect in the upperclassmen years? Yeah, totally. I think it, you know, kind of followed the same structure and format uh, that that happened in my college years where, you know, mm -hmm. I'm coming in as a freshman and I'm new to this thing, but I believe in myself and uh, I really just need the opportunity to prove myself. And so it takes, you know, three or four years for me, you know, kind of just like it did at Wofford these last four years. And, um, you know, during high school, you know, I just worked every day, um, tried to be the best I could be. And, um, you know, find, uh, the areas of my game that I excelled in and just continue mm -hmm. to get better in those. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, two years later, my junior year, got a big opportunity to play a lot. We were one of the best teams in the state. I think I averaged around 18 points a game and, um, play with some great teammates. And, and then my senior year about 20 and, uh, it was a great year as well. And so, um, yeah, I think it just, for some people it takes more time, um, for, for people to, to get their eyes on you. And, uh, you just got to stay true to the grind. Mentioned Mac Urban. That's obviously an EYBO team. They're an elite program. So walk us through, like you said, you're going up against and playing with guys like Jordan Poole. You got, you got you got all these different guys that have become NBA players, elite, elite guys at that point in time, too. So what was that like? You're competing against all these top level guys. How did that better you? Just what was that experience like? Yeah, no, initially, you know, going to the gym uh, and seeing these amazing players, it, it gave me a chip on my shoulder. Uh, and it was really cool to just, you know, um, have a chance to compete against such high level players and improve myself and, you know, playing against that competition and practice and whatnot is going to, you know, if I can succeed in that, it's going to elevate myself, improve myself right away. And so um, I think I was able to do that, get a spot, be the starting point guard, play a lot of Mac Irvin. And, um, you know, it was fun to just feed and learn off of these guys uh, who are such great playmakers and scorers and just love the game of basketball. They're so elite and way more naturally gifted than I am. So, mm -hmm. Um, I think I learned a lot about their work ethic, about their confidence, um, you know, and how aggressive they are, when to shoot, when to do this and, and stuff on the court. And so, um, yeah, and like you said, they're pros, right? They, they, they handled their business at a, a younger age um, on and off the court. So it's cool to, cool to be a part of. Now, when you look back and try to remember those practices, who was dominating that? Because I know sometimes my name be the guy that pans out to be the best. Like, who was typically the best player in those practices? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I was a lot, <laughs> I was great. Um, Justin Smith also, who just finished mm -hmm. his career at Arkansas, he, he was a high flyer. He was fun to throw lobs to. And I remember he was, he was dominating, um, Jordan wouldn't miss, you know, it was, it was a gym full of elite players. So, um, yeah, definitely memorable for sure. Let's hop into that recruiting process and 
you don't have too many offers as you probably could have had, especially this past time when you got to the transfer portal. But yeah, I don't know. Southern Utah was involved with you. Ozzy Wofford was in that group too. But like, walk us that recruiting process and what ultimately brought you to Wofford. Yeah, um, you know, the recruiting process was was a lot slower for me. Um, you know, I, I got a call from Wofford, I think in June, after I had a couple weekends with the Mac Urban Fire uh, prior in the spring. Mm -hmm. And um, initially, I, I didn't know D2, D3, what's, what level school is this? And then um, started learning about the history of going to the NCAA tournament so often and, and winning championships. And, uh, you know, I think that really caught my attention uh, right away, seeing the history of great point guards there, um, the system, how I'd fit. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think I got interest from, from a, a small handful of schools, Navy, um, Southern Utah, Bucknell, uh, UTEP. Um, and, and schools like that, nothing really high major at all. Um, but yeah, I think I, I remember watching, uh, Wofford playing at Duke, uh, early in my high school career years ago. And, uh, I remember telling my mom, I was like, uh, man, I, I think I could be like that, that point guard, uh, which was Eric Garcia at the time at Wofford. Um, I could, I could do that. I could totally do that. Uh, and I got excited about that. And it's crazy just to say that, you know, I was watching that game and, Years later, I was there playing and being that that role. And so, um, yeah. And we kind of discussed it a little bit, but obviously, as we said, you are a guy that's playing at an elite level. You're going to be one of the top guards at an ACC type school next year. But at that point in time, like you aren't getting this high level offers from all over the place. So, why do you think that was? Like, when you look back at it, did a coach tell you if only you had this or that? Like, why do you think you weren't heavily recruited? Because you had great numbers your final two years of high school. You played at Mac Urban all the other guys as high level recruited players, like why do you feel like you weren't getting heavily offered like some of those other guys were? Yeah, I think, um, you know, kind of just opportunity and attention, um, just exposure, just kind of how it happens for some people. And um, I just flew under the radar. I think some, some eyes weren't on me. I wasn't highly even ranked in the state, um, you know, my freshman, sophomore year because I wasn't playing varsity and, and guys that were young and playing well in varsity early on in their high school careers were ranked and, and that, was sustained for them. So, um, I think that was one thing for sure. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, it made it, it made it interesting for me and made it, uh, more challenging. I think, you know, I kind of had to work my way up and figure out a way. Um, but, you know, thankfully, you know, once I got the opportunity to play with Mac Urban Fire, uh, things really opened up for me and, um, you know, Wofford jumping on the scene was, was huge. So. And you were being recruited by Mike Young, the coach you're not going to go back and play for. And he was there for 17 years. He had a historic all-time great run there. Probably could have got a head coaching job at a high major or even earlier than that. But what was it like just learning from him, you know, taking him in, even into the recruiting process? Like, just what was his pitch to you? Like, just how did you guys get that bond growing and your recruiting process and ultimately then playing for him? Yeah. Um, you know, out of high school, it was great. He was so, so personable and, and became really close quickly with our family. And, you know, see him at my game in that AU circuit and – um, I think that meant a whole lot to me, even even games where I wasn't playing great, even games I wasn't playing much like uh, after he had offered me, he was he was coming fine to all my games and, and there for everything, um, even through those ups and downs and just continued to, to you know, value me and, and show me how much uh, he wanted me. Um, and so I think that that stuck out a ton and, and just the pitch of, you know, what I'd be able to do in, in fitting at Wofford and um, that I was the type of point guard uh, that he relied on and, and would trust and. Um, I had seen that with with previous point guards there and, and thought I'd be able to fit, fill in and just like they had done uh, and had a great career. So I think that was, you know, ultimately the, the same thing that that happened again um, when I entered the transfer portal as a grad transfer. So now what makes him so special? Because you got your first two years with him, we'll talk about and then obviously you get this upcoming year. But he's a guy that has gone to Virginia Tech, which is a decent program, but They've now been really special the past two years, and he's not bringing in the most highly ranked recruits yet. Like, he is going to probably start getting in that atmosphere and that level pretty soon now with another great season. But he finds a guy like yourself, which didn't have too many offers, and you pan out great. Obviously, Kevin's going to be a guy that's going to be playing in the NBA probably after this next season. Like, he finds all those under the radar guys that aren't heavily recruited. So, how does he develop you guys? Like, what's his philosophy? What's it like during the course of a year? Like, how does he make you guys into these great players? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a great coach because of the person that he is, his character and, um, you know, his personality. It's incredible to be around and um, he's special. He, you know, he makes you feel welcome and belong and, um, you know, and he can coach. You know, he is an offensive genius. 
um, with with plays and in play style and um, using certain players, skilled guys uh, and whatnot to succeed. And, you know, he produces great teams out of those type of guys and guys like myself. And, um, you know, and then he 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 coaches on defense. Absolutely. You know, our defense is I feel like the, the two years I was with him uh, and even this year, you know, were. Uh, you know, so responsible, held so responsible on defense. Um, and that makes us great on defensive end. And then I think, you know, another big thing about him is, is goes along with his personality and who he is, is, is he trusts people uh, immensely, you know, his coaching staff, the assistants and um, everyone uh, in the program to coach young is, is equally important. And he shows that you can feel that. Um, yeah. Every day in the gym, it's just fun to be around him. And um, yeah, it's great. I think that's, that's a lot of what makes him so good. So someone told you heading into your freshman season that you're going to become a guy that's going to start starting after the first couple of weeks of the season and pretty much start then from there on out. And you're going to go down as one of the better players in Wofford history. Could you have imagined, like, was that your expectation? Was that just a dream still? Like, how would you have taken that and someone told you that? Yeah, I mean, it definitely would have been, you know, a shock, too, just to see, you know, if someone told me that's the career I, that would pan out for me. But I definitely believed, it. you know, I definitely had the confidence that it could totally happen. And, and even coming in my freshman year, I think, uh, you know, I knew I was going to be able to start and I could I could start and I was going to just take it day by day and do what I, I was asked of, uh, not try to do too much or, or, or less uh, than than what I could do and um, what the team needed. And so I think just having that mindset, you know, helped me get that starting spot. Um, and then, you know, the rest was history, kind of just growing year by year, um, watching the players. And, um, yeah, I think I, uh, year by year, I was able to step into more of a scoring role, leadership role, and um, just expand my game and um, really just show uh, and use uh, the talents and skills I knew I had. Obviously, everyone kind of got to know this, especially in your sophomore year when you went to the tournament, but he always was the kind of go-to guy your first few years, and that's Fletcher McGee. Obviously, he had a great player. He was all-time great offered player as well. What was it like just playing alongside a guy that that caliber? Like your freshman season, he's a veteran. He's gone through this, a great player. What was it like just learning from him? Yeah, you know, learning from Fletch was awesome. Uh, I came in as a young young guy freshman year, and um, he had had two amazing seasons already. And so I knew um, I was going to be able to learn a lot from him, a great shooter like him, the way he was able to get his shot off. Um, and we've grown close, so close over the last couple of years. Um, and it's been great to, to pick his brain and, and talk, you know, uh, basketball, you know, techniques and, and, and grow together and, and try to push each other and um, compete and practice every day, you know, doing, doing shooting drills, always trying to outshoot each other and mm-hmm. saying we're better than each other, whatever. And yeah, I know he's, he's got that record and stuff, but um, no, he's great. It was awesome. You know, I've learned so much from him. Um, I think, you know, most importantly, work ethic. He's always in the gym. He's always early. He's always late. He's always getting, uh, you know, the most shots up. And so you can see, you know, the success he's had, um, the type of impact he can have on people. You have to taste the shoot offs because obviously he's an all time great shooter in college history. You're getting that caliber too. Who is winning those games? Like, if you guys would have played five or six games, who's going to be the best shooter in those games? Ah, six games. I, I, I would probably say I'm winning four. I'm winning four of those games. Um, I know he would say he's winning six, he's winning four, whatever, but um, it was a good, it was a good battle, good competition between us in, in practices. Yeah, it really was. It was fun. When you first think of Fletch, like what's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, yeah, that that he loves basketball. He just loves it. He loves, you know, shooting, he loves dribbling, he loves, you know, doing anything, uh, stretching whatever conditioning eating right whatever just to help him play better on the court um because he, he loves to succeed there and he, he has and so um yeah just how much he loves the game and um like by example the way he does that impacts other people so well there's another guy that also came in the same recruiting class as you we kind of talked about him a little bit that's kevin who you're going to reunite with now virginia tech but how special was he that freshman year? like did you think he's going to become a guy as an all ACC caliber player, a guy could possibly come away as player of the year this upcoming season. Like, do you think he was that special as a freshman? Yeah, actually, I, I mean, it was interesting because it was hard for other people to see. He didn't have, he didn't, he didn't shoot the ball. He was just, you know, that hustle guy getting on the floor, getting rebounds, uh, defending anyone one through five. And so um, I knew he had all of those things. And because he had those things, it made him super special because um, I, I knew in practices or sometimes we'd go to the gym and shoot, play one-on-one, whatever he 
had skill that he was not showing in practices and games. And so I knew, uh, you know, from a ball handling standpoint, passing standpoint, shooting ability, uh, that when he got older, when he had more opportunity to, to show those things, that he would really be good. Um, and as everyone sees now, he is. So that freshman season, you guys have a pretty solid year, 21-13. You guys have a huge win, though, against UNC. You guys upset them with the number five. But what would you say was your favorite game from that season? Like, you look at the upsets, you look at your best game you played. Like, what was your favorite game that season? Yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, probably that that win at UNC, definitely. I think I played 34 minutes uh, in the Dean Dome as a freshman and hit a couple big shots. And um, just to go in there, you know, and, and no one expects us to win. But we did. And, and to go in there and do it, it was awesome. I think ESPN gave us like a 1% or 2% chance to win. but. It was super cool. And then um, I, I think another game might be hosting Georgia Tech at home that year we won, uh, which is a really, a really big win, a great, fun game. Um, had some nerve wracking shots down the end, some free throws that I had to hit. And so that 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 helped and helped win, helped seal the game. Uh, that was an awesome win, too, to have them at Wofford. There's a certain mentality that people see really comes along in tournament time, but those actually study games see that the mid-major players and teams can always be special. I think a lot of people were shocked nationally about Oral Roberts, but those that watched Max and Kevin knew how special those guys were, and it's always those type of teams. So you got that kind of pride. You were part of that mid-major kind of dog mentality, that underdog kind of thing. Like, what, just walk us through that. To like, what is it about the mid-major programs that can make you guys go on these tournament runs, make you guys go and upset these top teams? Like, what is, like, kind of the mentality of a mid-major player? Yeah, I think, um, you know, a mix of having that underdog, under uh, looked um, mindset, along with uh, the confidence uh, and the work ethic. Um, I think that kind of boils up a great mid-major player and, and team that makes runs and, and sees success. And so, um, yeah, you know, our teams were, uh, especially our, you know, undefeated team that year where we went to the NCAA tournament and beat Seton Hall. We were, we were filled with guys who were, just workers, uh, competitors, um, and dudes who are really good at basketball, who loved the game of basketball, who were, you know, raised in great families, um, and have just been pushed, um, not maybe the most naturally gifted guys again. And, um, I think that that really helped us when we all came together, had the right mindset and intentions. Um, you can see what, yeah, what mid-major teams can do. And, and it's, it's special and no, no, no one else should really, you know, overlook them. That sophomore season was your best overall as a team. You guys go 30 and five. You guys get to the tournament run. You guys get a round one win. You guys go against Kentucky, a great team, obviously lose there. But walk us to that team. Like, how special did you guys think you guys were heading to the year? Like, did you guys expect to be a tournament team that could even win a game? Like, how special do you guys think that team was heading into your sophomore year? Yeah, I think uh, we were super confident and we thought it was going to be a year, you know, close to what we had. Um, we really expected to have a crazy good year. We were older um, and we knew the firepower we were returning from the previous year. Uh, we had a training camp in August and went to, took a team trip to Portugal. And um, I think that team chemistry we had uh, that trip, that training camp uh, and just how competitive it was. Um, you know, that year we kind of had like a one, a, a 1A and a one B starting five. It was the, these 10 that, um, that came in and, and just the, the way we balanced is incredible. And um, yeah, I think um, we knew we had some confidence that we were, it was going to be an elite year. We see whenever a team does take that trip before season, I'd rather be wherever it is across the country. That always gets that chemistry. So walk us through that. Like what was like going out there? Just take us through your favorite experiences and just overall, what was that trip like before the season? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, you know, gearing up to go for an overseas trip, uh, to Portugal, you know, it was exciting to all of us. And so we were eager to get practicing and, and get ready to roll. And, uh, it was just so much fun, you know, to be out there with, uh, the, the team and coaches, their families and a bunch of Wofford people, um, to go over there, have that experience. It was so many of the guys first time out of the country. And, um, you know, from the restaurants we ate at the, the excursions, the experiences we got to have to, um, you know, the teams that the two pro teams we got to play over there, um, against that it, it was a great experience it was awesome you know to see a whole new world kind of um and uh yeah the basket we were all super thankful that you know the game of basketball was able to take us there 
what would you say was your favorite memory? Like, was there one memory that stands out the most from that trip? Yeah, I think uh, one of my favorite memories was probably a few of us guys uh, getting up early in the morning. We, we our, our hotel overlooked this beach um, and the, with the ocean, and um, there was this awesome sand sand on the beach, and we uh, had some awesome competitive you know sprinting and, and and workouts out there, which were super cool. Just to you know bring the grind to Portugal and do that together, uh, it, it was awesome. Well, let's go through the course that season because you used to have a pretty solid overall role. You're starting the team all pretty much the entire season stuff for senior night. But how did you feel you did that year? Like just take us through the ups and downs of that season and how you kind of felt you did your sophomore year. Yeah. Um, sophomore year, you know, we had a lot of firepower, like I've mentioned, and um being able to host UNC uh our first game of the year at home was huge. I think that, you know, just kicked off the mentality for our whole year that year, you know, um, made us so hungry and, and, and gave us such a chip on our shoulder um, with such a big game to start off. You know, the prep for preseason was elite. And, um, you know, we we lost that game. And I think we lost to um, Oklahoma and Kansas. Um, I don't know who else we lost to. UNC, Oklahoma. Kansas thought we had one more uh, I don't know. but yeah you know those losses like it, it, they were high major teams that we were losing to but we weren't losing to them by much except for Kansas um, and then you know we, we played really really well throughout the rest of that non-conference season um, beat ETSU at home in a conference game in December um, and I think going into you know finishing non-conference we were super um, ready for conference play you know like like more than ever um, ready to dominate and um, we knew how good we were going to be. Um, and, you know, being able to go 21 and 0 in conference, 18 and 0 in the regular season was just special. Um, we, we never really thought we were going to lose. Um, I think we, we had just this swagger, this confidence to us, um, that came from the practice floor every single day, which was, was awesome. And, um, I think, you know, when we got maybe, maybe 10, 11, 12 and 0, uh, we started to really see, wow, like, yeah, like let's, let's finish thing out undefeated. And so, um, there were games though, where, you know, our, our starting five, uh, didn't play well, we were down, but you know, that, that, uh, second group came in and just, you know, pumped us up, got us right back in the game, took the lead, um, that, that group won us a lot of games. Um, and so th it was cool just to see that sometimes on, on any given night, one, one special guy will, will, uh, step up for another, um, when, when someone might be off. So it was really cool. It was a special year for sure. You've just listed a ton of great programs you got to go up against, and you've had now four years of playing against many different players, at all different levels. Who would you say has been your favorite matchup, though? Like, has there been one guy that you'll never forget going up against? Yeah, I think Joel Berry, my freshman year um, at UNC, was uh, an awesome experience. You know, I was a freshman. Uh, he was a senior and um, had, had put together such a great career already. And so going in there to, to play him was, was, was super cool. Something I was really excited for and, um, you know, to go in there and win was, was great as well. And the dream of anybody is to go to the tournament you guys got that bid and you guys get a winning in hall too there, but walk us through that. Like, what was it like just getting to go to the NCAA tournament is the thing that everyone dreams of growing up and you guys did it at a special school too, like a program that's a one bid conference. You guys got through, you guys made it. Just what was that experience like just getting to go to March Madness and be part of that tournament? Yeah, it was it was awesome. Uh, you know, from the Selection Sunday show um, to the road trips down there, you know, into Jacksonville, Florida, gearing up for the games. Um, you know, just just the whole whole experience is, is you know, basically indescribable, you know, um, to get to play in March Madness uh, and then in, in front of fans and, and tons of fans. And uh, it felt like all of Spartanburg, South Carolina was in Jacksonville for those games. And um, to go in there and, and be, you know, the seven seed playing a 10 uh, in Seton Hall was just a cool experience, you know, to get a seven seed and, and to be, um, you know, see, see articles and press and stuff saying that, you know, we, we have a great chance to make a run really deep uh, was, was, was really fun and motivating. And so, um, yeah, that experience was, was, was really fun. One I'll never forget. After the season, things get a little chaotic for you. Ultimately, you don't really change sceneries, but Coach Young takes it over Virginia Tech. He moves on. So what was that like? Just take us through the whole offseason, how you kind of – were you expecting the transition for Coach Young? How did you handle that? Like, 
Just take us through the whole offseason for you in that summer. Yeah, I think I was home on spring break, actually, uh, and uh, the Final Four was happening, and saw some news, saw some some rumors that Coach Young uh, could potentially, you know, be moving to a different school, a high major, and um, I think I saw something about Virginia Tech and, you know, him being from, from so close to there would fit, but um, I, I didn't expect it. I didn't think it was going to happen. I was definitely saying, you know, no way he's leaving. He hasn't before, you know, he's going to stay here and, um, I'm going to get to play for him for two more years. And, uh, we headed back for, for, uh, the rest of the, the spring after spring break. And, uh, we had a meeting call found out that day ESPN put it out and that he was leaving. And so, you know, it was pretty, uh, crazy for us all to experience that. It was a crazy little transition period. Um, but you know, we, we were all rooting for coach McCauley to get the head job and, um, you know, he was our head assistant, um, and was so critical and so crucial for, for how well we played that last year, winning and going undefeated. And so, um, we were all rooting for him to get the job. And, uh, when he did, we were pumped. And so, yeah. For a lot of guys, we see guys enter the transfer portal this year, especially, but even in the past few years now, guys will go to the portal, they'll test out what's going on. Some might come back, but. Oftentimes, you never know. Like, like the coaching change, they may not have the same idea about you. They might have a whole different system that doesn't fit for you. So what kind of caused you to come back? Like, why did you say, you know, I could go test it? I mean, I just had two great years. I'm on a tournament team. I'm sure I could have got a lot of different schools offering me. Like, what, what kind of led you to stay here and continue a legacy at Wofford? Yeah, I, I would say just the, the home vibe, the home fit I had at Wofford. Um, and then with Coach McCauley taking the job over, being so close to him and um, knowing what, you know, he was going to do to the program and, and how he was going to help. And, um, you know, just, just, you know, not, not wanting to change and cr- go to a whole ne- new team, new staff and trying to, um, you know, start over in a way uh, already. And so or, or again, and so I didn't want to do that. Um, and I just loved Wofford. I love the people. I had so many friends and, and, and it's such a great community, even other than just the, the, the athletics, you know, there's, there's great people there and I have, I have some lifelong friends from there. And so I, I think just wanted to, to keep it all the same. Um, and the family fit, uh, I knew I was going to be getting the next two years out of the basketball. And um, I think that was, for the most part, what it was. And we see with a lot of guys, I know this is a whole different scenario. Obviously, you're not going to finish off your career at Wofford. You're going to Virginia Tech. But this is a whole other thing. I was like, COVID came into factor. So all the teams going to different programs, that's a whole different scenario. But for some guys, they don't always want to stay loyal. Like a guy that's playing at a high level like you just did at a mid-major, they might say, you know, I could make myself a higher level. I can go play at a high major, maybe get more eyes on me, something like that. So what caused you to always stay low to Wofford? Like even after that junior year, like why did you ever even consider possibly going to a different transfer portal and going somewhere else? Like, did you ever consider that? Or we just truly want to say I'm locked into Wofford for all four years. Yeah, I, I never really ever considered it. Never really considered leaving. Um, Wofford, you know, has meant so much to me and, and w- was so special uh, to me throughout my years there. And so, um, I was locked in, you know, I was going to stay for, for, um, for sure. Let's go with that junior year because now it's your time to shine. You get 12 points in the game. You really became one of the vocal points scoring for that team. So what led to that breakout? Like take us to that junior year for you. Yeah, that junior year was awesome. We had a really good, uh, skilled, talented team. Um, offense and, and system, you know, pretty much stayed the same with the coaching change um, a little bit um, more ball screen, a little bit, uh, a little bit of different things, but um, you know, just stepping up in more of a leadership role my junior year had more um, opportunity to score over the years. And um, yeah, I think it was really just, just that becoming, becoming an upperclassman and, and more aggressive. Let's get into last season because this was a chaotic season for everyone in the world, but I think a lot of people figured out that the course this season that everyone had to have a star player emerge. In some cases, maybe like a Baylor and they have four NBA first round picks. It might be a little different, but for every other program besides those type of teams, like someone had to emerge and become a lead on the locker room. Otherwise, distraction will come into play. There's a lot of stuff going on this year. And you stepped up to that point. You averaged 18 points a game, three rebounds, four assists. Like you really did emerge. You became an all conference first team type of guy. Like, Walk us through how you took on that role. Like, did you find the importance that coach say, okay, we need you to step up this year? Like, what led to you really taking on this leadership role this year? Yeah, I think it was just, you know, kind of growing up uh, in, into myself, you know, my senior year coming in as a leader and uh, wanting to go out with a, a great, strong finish to, to the, my career at Wofford. And, 
you know, I've learned so much my freshman and sophomore, junior year. And so I wanted to put it all together my senior year. And last summer, really working on my game, um, getting a lot of confidence, creating new moves, being more dynamic and um, just kind of having more of that scores mentality, um, you know, really, really pushed me to, to be able to, to do that. And, you know, it really helped our team um, when, when, you know, two guys were on me or I was able to, to uh, create holes in the defense to, um, get assists and get get the ball flowing for for guys to knock down shots and so I knew we were gonna have a really dangerous team and um, it was really fun to to step into that role. There's something about the NCAA. Obviously, they kind of are late for a lot of different things, but ultimately, it was about a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks right before the season started, that they came out with the idea saying, "Guys, this isn't gonna count as eligibility against you guys. Like, you guys are gonna have a free year to play. You guys, seniors can come back another year if you want." And all this stuff unfolded. So. When you did hear about that, like when that was officially made a rule, this wasn't going to count. You have another senior year to become a super senior if you wanted to. At that point in time, did you start considering that? Was that something that was on your mind? Did it not come until after the year? Like, what kind of were your thoughts? And when did you start feeling like, okay, I'm going to come back for another year of college basketball? Yeah, I think actually definitely, you know, got got in my mind thinking about, you know, what I want to come back, what I – um, want to play again. And um, I definitely did start thinking about that, having conversations with my parents and family and um, just kind of reasoning, looking at pros and cons, what, what would be best for me. And um, yeah, so I think, you know, throughout the year, um, really, you know, wanting to put those things aside, wanting to really just focus on, on my senior year and, 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 and knowing that, you know, I only have the best year if I, I think about this is it. This is the last one, the last go around. We got to win. I got to play well. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, going out on a high note, uh, you know, was the goal. And so um, definitely a thought, definitely something that I was going to say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look into this after the season. And you look at the entire Walker career leaving behind now, you finished top 10 all time in points, top five all time in assists, you finished top 10 really, and pretty much almost 10 or so categories. When you look at all these awards actually do have, like what goes to your mind is what's your overall thoughts and everything you have done in the past four years out there? Yeah, I think uh, it's awesome to, to hear those things. I take pride in them, uh, you know, and I think kind of just shows, you know, the, the the career I was able to have as a player and, um, you know, just just the development I was able to go through, how much better, you know, my coaching staff and teammates are able to push me and, and, and make me better throughout the years. Um, but, you know, it all happened so fast and it was such a blur. I feel like it was yesterday I was coming in as a freshman and just hoping to, to get some minutes and, and get to play and, and to prove myself and, um, so it was, it was such a fun process. And I think, you know, all those things are cool. Um, you know, but just the cherries on the top, you know, it's, it was all about the journey, all about the progress and, um, and I enjoyed it so much. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, I definitely take pride in it. And, um, so thankful for, you know, those fa- last four years. Out of every accolade you brought in after every record you broke and all the wars you brought in, what's the most meaningful one to you? Yeah, I would definitely say, you know, being a part of the the, the championship team, being a champion, uh, you know, saying that uh, I was a part of the the only team in Wofford history to to win an NCAA tournament game, um, to go undefeated, um, to be the starting point guard on that team and to to really have an impact. And um, I would say that, that that's definitely the biggest one, um, because that championship, uh, the team we had, the chemistry, everything about it, how special that year was. Um, you know, it was a real defining year, a real defining moment in, in my career there and in my life. And so um, I would definitely say that that means the most. So the season comes to a conclusion and you decide to put your name in the portal. Obviously, that means you're also going to decide to take your extra year of eligibility, become a super senior. So at what point does this all come together? Like, when did you officially say, you know, I want to become a super senior. I'm going to take one more year. And also I decided I want to go play somewhere else for my final year. Like, walk us through these steps and what led to that decision. Yeah, so we had finished our season and, um, you know, with the, the prior ruling of giving, you know, uh, winter sport athletes an extra year because of COVID, um, I wanted to explore that. I wanted to, you know, not just limit myself and, um, you know, go one route or, or just go overseas right away or, or whatnot. But, um, you know, I wanted to explore all options and see, um, you know, what would be best, what, what, what were options for me uh, at the time. Um, and so, you know, putting my name in the transfer portal uh, it was ultimately that's where I, how I uh, Virginia Tech and so um, you know it was, it was definitely uh, crazy but also you know such a gift uh, that that we got this extra year I can imagine a ton of schools came after you obviously we talked about you going to Virginia Tech but you're a guy that can shoot 40 plus percent every college in the country like that on a team 
Their guys to average 18 points a game. So you obviously can score at multiple levels too. And you can facilitate. You're a veteran player too. So what was really the pool looking like for you? Like who was all the teams interested in you? Who were you talking to? Like who were the, really the teams you were highly considering up until the end there? Yeah, you know, some of the main teams uh, that I was in most contact with um, were Wisconsin, home team, hometown team, um, Colorado, Baylor, um, Ole Miss, Missouri, Virginia Tech. Um, yeah, I mean, those were a handful of teams, great programs. Um, and, you know, um, yeah, I, I think I knew um, I didn't quite know I was going to get, you know, so much uh, so many calls and, and, and offers and interest and stuff. but. Um, yeah, uh, it was, it was awesome. It was an honor, you know, to be talked to by so many great programs and schools. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you got to go where you're familiar with and, and what, where you trust and what you, where you fit best. So, uh, that was ultimately for me, you know, Virginia Tech. I know you're a believer too. And obviously God always has a plan and it might not be when you want it to, but eventually comes to fruition. And this was your case. We talked about coming out of high school you didn't have too many offers. You want a high ranked player, you know, going to Wofford to a solid school. You have a great career. Nothing to take away from that. But now the time is you come to this process and you, like you said, all these countless high major schools, the kind of the dream scenario every high schooler or guy, every guy coming out of high school dreams of. So when you look at that, like what was going through your mind, knowing that you finally have made it to that point, you're finding that guy that could choose really wherever he wants to go to college to at. Yeah, it was really cool, you know, to have options. Um, and I, I think, you know, that was the main reason why I really put my name in to see, uh, you know, what opportunities I might have. Um, yeah, like you said, you know, you know, God's first and, and my faith is so important to me. And um, it, it's just kind of crazy and cool just to see how how similar this whole situation right here is uh, with the transfer uh, to my situation in high school where I was able to join the Mac Urban Fire and, um, you know, kind of. Uh, I want to play division one college basketball. I'm not really getting any opportunities right now, but I trust you. I trust that you have a plan that you have a purpose. And, um, you know, one quote, one of my friends that told me was, was probably the most influential was you can't rush perfection. And while I was believing in, 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 in trusting that the plan was perfect, that it's all going to work out, it's going to be the right fit and everything's going to be good. You know, I was, I was stressed and anxious about the timing of everything. I wanted it now and I wanted it quick. Uh, but when I heard, you know, I can't rush perfection, the, uh, not only the plans gonna be perfect, but the timing. And so I had to just sit back, relax, chill, uh, trust God and, and keep my head down and work every day. And so um, kind of, you know, along the same process of, of, as this, you know, being at Wofford for four years, uh, head down, just just working and, and enjoying my time there uh, at such a great program uh, to, you know, now um, just have this come out of the blue extra year and, and God presents this opportunity. So such a gift and such a blessing. So you are going to be reuniting that with Coach Young and, I'm sure that had to be a pretty good at time. Like you get on the phone, you're in the portal and your former coach that recruited you coached you for two years. You went on a special tournament run with him. He wants you now on his team. He's recruiting you. So how did that all unfold? Like what was it like when he first called you? What, what was the conversation like and how did it ultimately grow to you ultimately committing to his school? Yeah. You know, him calling, you know, uh, was awesome to, to hear back from him and, um, you know, we, we, we've been close for years now and, uh, we know each other well, and it's just such a familiar relationship and, um, you know, it's great. You know, I think, um, you know, knowing I was, I was wanted there somewhere, um, with someone who, who I believe in and I trust so much, um, and have had such a pleasure playing for, uh, was huge and really exciting for me. Um, and, uh, you know, every school other than, than Virginia tech that I was talking to, you know, I really had to go back to thinking, you know, um, I know what I'm getting from him. I know what I'm getting from that staff. Um, and, and I know the type of culture they have and, um, you know, the success that they, they've had this past year and that they're going to have. And, um, you know, so everything was kind of, you know, rivaling and comparing to them. Um, and, you know, ultimately, you know, getting back, going to back to reunite with coach young and, and Keve and, um, that, that also ultimately was, was most important to me. So if, Virginia Tech never came into picture. Who would you say would have been your second favorite school? Like, was there one other program that you really did like? Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, I, I really, I really did like, I've heard so much great about uh, so many great things about Colorado. Um, and, you know, I know McKinley and uh, seeing how he's had such a great, awesome career there. Um, you know, that, that I could totally see, you know, maybe that fitting, um, you know, that was definitely a thought. Uh, but 
Um, you know, Baylor was, was, was a hot, hot school coming off the national championship. And so, um, really fun to, to talk to them. And I know their, their staff is, is, uh, a believer, staff of believers. And so, um, that was really important to me as well. Um, uh, but yeah, so if Virginia Tech, you know, didn't come into the picture, uh, those, those might've been some, some, uh, some schools on the list. Well, let's get into this team. Cause it's going to be an exciting season. I know Reese just yesterday, I obviously had the news about Ty Reese, which, Honestly, uh, something I'm not too happy about. But overall, the big picture is Kebe, the guy I think could be ACC player of the year, or at least one of the top guys in the ACC. He's returning back, which is a huge addition. You're coming in, and you still have a ton of great guys. Sean and Lynn are coming in through portal and mm-hmm. recruiting class. A lot of other great returners, too. So take us to this team, though. Like, how's the show you guys looking so far? And what do you like about the team so far? Yeah, no, like you said, I think, um, you know, we got a lot of firepower coming in and, and a lot returning, um, you know, with Kevin coming back, it's going to be so fun. And uh, like you said, you know, a huge, huge candidate for ACC player of the year, just such a weapon. Um, so versatile, you know, uh, as, as a skilled big guy um, who has so many intangibles and plays so hard. Um, it, it, you know, it's so fun to play with him again, to be out there on the court again with him and, and just great guys. You know, the whole program is just filled with, with awesome, talented guys and, um, it's pushing me. I'm learning a lot already, but I think, you know, we have uh, a chance to be, to be really, really good, you know, to make a lot of noise uh, in the ACC and to, uh, you know, hopefully make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm learning a lot already. And uh, you know, uh, we've seen how good they were last year, you know, f- finishing third in the ACC and, you know, returning so many weapons. Um, I think there's a lot of promise. Walk us through what people can expect from you. Do you think we can see more of the scoring role from last year? A guy could be scoring 15, maybe even 18 points a game. So do you think you're going to go more towards the season where you have a lot more assists? Like what's kind of the playbook and plan that Coach Young wants for you this upcoming season? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, what I've heard from him and and, 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 and looking to is to, to be myself, to go out there and to uh, not overthink anything and just play basketball and, and, and be aggressive, be dynamic, um, but be be a point guard and be who I am. Take care of the ball, defend, lead, talk, be an extension of him on the court, um, you know, what I enjoy doing. And so um, really, you know, just uh, however that turns out for me is, is, is going to be great throughout the year. You know, I'm really just – excited to, to learn, to, to get better and to, um, to be myself, you know, and I think, um, uh, ultimately that's, that's why, you know, he wants me, uh, wanted me is because of, you know, the opportunity for me to come and be myself, um, you know, on a given night, however many points that, that would end up with, however many assists, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I'm just looking forward to having fun out there and, and winning games with a great team. Um, so yeah, just be myself and, and, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll all work out. So you've been a part of this team now for a few weeks. You kind of got to see some of these guys work out. Who is some of that people should be excited about? Like, is there someone that's going to have a huge breakout season or someone that's really going to play at a high level that you've been kind of surprised at how good they are this, so far this year? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the the, the main guys uh, who had a really good year last year uh, and great career so far and that are expected to do really, really well and, and, and be great contributors are going to have amazing seasons. Really, really great. Uh, great guys um, and and workers in the gym. So I think, you know, they'll have great, great years. I think um, Darius Maddox uh, is going to, going to be great. He's going to be so good. He's so fun to be around and, and he's so skilled. Um, he can shoot the ball. He can score it, um, learning a ton from him. And uh, he's been fun, fun to be around. Um, but yeah, I, I can see him, you know, uh, really making an impact uh, for our team this year. Absolutely. A few more things before I let you go, one of which is discussing coaching on a little bit more. And I know some people get to see coaches when they're on the court and you see maybe an interview here or there, but very few people get to see what they're like off the court. And so you've got two years with them. You've gone through two recruiting processes with them. And now you've gone through about a month of workouts with them. But out of all this time with them, what would you say is your funniest moment with Coach Young? Oh, funniest moment with Coach Young. Um... It's a great question. Um, I would say, you know, just just the overall uh, times and practices, um, which, yeah, like you said, not many people get to see where he's, you know, he's cracking jokes and, uh, you know, getting into a player, but a funny way that that's making everyone laugh. And um, the 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 terms that he has, the vocabulary is, is crazy uh, words we've never heard of. 
Um, but it, it, it's 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 awesome. He he's he's um, he can be so funny uh, at times, even in such a serious situation in, in practices or whatnot, even in games sometimes. Um, you know, I remember at Wofford, there was an awesome moment where, you know, I think the time we were playing UNC and the time in the NCAA tournament as well, when, you know, he's just telling us to enjoy it, you know, and, and not take it too seriously, um, but to, to enjoy it and take it all in. And so, um, that, that's really who he is. And, um, it's, it's been so fun to be around, um, and I'm looking forward to it for this year as well. Now you are a great player, but I have to imagine you messed up at some point during a time with him so far practice. So. What's that one time or have you had that time yet where he's laid into you and you messed up practice so far in your career with him? I think my freshman year, uh, we were, you know, it was preseason and we were getting ready to play South Carolina at home um, in the first game of the year. And, you know, that that's a big, big jump for me, a big, a big, uh, big stage uh, as a freshman. And so I think, you know, I had turnover or something in a specific game like situation we were prepping for. Uh, and, you know, he was just saying how, how big and athletic uh, and long these players are going to be that I, I haven't played against before. And um, just, they're going to be pterodactyls. They're huge. They're just, it's, it's a different level, different, different world. And so uh, that was one time for sure. I, I remember, um, but it was great for me. No doubt. Well, your personality off the court is fun too. One way Virginia Tech intro you into the team was with the cooking video you did post from before. So you ought to take us to the backstory behind that a little bit. Yeah. So it was uh, it was Thanksgiving, my senior year of high school, and um, I had seen earlier that day this this rap video of this person wrapping off beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, all these food, this food that they were gonna have at the Thanksgiving meal or whatever. And it was a wrap, and so I was like, okay, this is awesome. Um, was just wanted to dance to it, whatever. So I, my sister recorded it. I told my parents to dance real quick as they're kicking the meal. They were like, no, 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 we got to make this. And I was like, just go for it. Just go for it. So sister thing, we uh, uh, play the music and just dance while the food's getting ready. And and my parents killed it. They, they're what made it for sure. And um, I, I just posted it, you know, as a little joke and this is funny and, and, and entertaining. And all of a sudden it kind of blew up and, and just uh, it went viral. So uh, it was definitely a, a funny experience, but one that every time, you know, Thanksgiving rolls around that, that we laugh about. Well, something I was like wrapping up and discussing is building a legacy for yourself. And I know that all guys want to remember for something. So when that day does come, you step away from this game, whenever that is, what do you ultimately want to remember for, for what you achieve both on and off the court? Yeah, I think something that speaks to both of those things um, is, you know, on the court, uh, who I am as a player. Uh, would just be someone who, you know, gave all of their body, mind, uh, and effort um, to the game day in and day out in the weight room, on the court, in the, in the film room, in the locker room, um, you know, just someone who gave it all, just full effort, uh, was so bought in and, and gave it all uh, just because of how much it means to me. And I know the impact that can have on, on other players. And then I would say, you know, just, uh, you know, personally, uh, with, with players, uh, influencing guys and being able to, to be known and remember as someone who enjoys life and, and, and pours that kind of, uh, positivity into a team and to a community. And, um, you know, when it is time to step away from basketball, I think, um, hopefully I'll be remembered as that and, you know, carry that same charisma and, and personality throughout my life, um, to have a, to have an impact on people. Um, yeah. This topic I was like wrapping up discussing and we kind of talked about throughout the interview at times too is your faith though. So take us to that. I know you're, you're super outspoken about it and obviously they're not all believers. You don't have to be outspoken about it, but it's always something special to be a light when you have a platform as an athlete to be able to spread God's message, be as light on social media in person. So what's led you to be like that? Like what's led you to kind of take that approach where you're going to be vocal about it? Like you're not going to be shy to spread God's light. So what's led you to be that kind of type of person? Yeah, no, I think just the impact um, that other people uh, being outspoken um, about their faith and the gospel uh, has has the impact that's had on me. You know, I think um, not only is my faith uh, in, important to me, but it's so important that that's shared with other people. Uh, the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news, um, it, it's 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 life. It's 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 so life giving. It's joyful. It's um the key to life um, and, and being, you know, free um, and uh, in right relationship with him. And um, I think, you know, doing every part I can to 
share that and not just keep it to my ultimately the the reason I'm here on earth and um you know that there's no other there's no better mission um more life-giving mission more important urgent message and mission um for me to live by and and for others to live by and so um I'm so thankful for how other people have done that for me and, and do that for for others as well and there's always ups and downs to a relationship but I know, especially as a believer, like you will have different times you struggled. And we've seen that throughout high school. You didn't have all these offers. You haven't always had the advantages like physically that we talked about earlier too. But when would you say in your life so far that God's really shown up? Like what's the biggest moment you look back at and you think, okay, this is really, I've seen really seen God's work in this moment in my life. Yeah, I think, you know, going back to uh, high school, um, you know, I gave my life to Christ, um, my sophomore year, right before my sophomore year, uh, high school. Uh, and that was so life-changing and just set me on a trajectory of passion for him, um, that is indescribable. And I think, you know, from that point on, everything's meant so much more to me. And, um, I've seen life and, and, and the, the things I've gone through, you know, through the lens of Christ and through his hand and through his eyes more so. And, um, you know, I think a huge instance, was the transition to Mac Irvin where, where that miracle and blessing happened, where, where these, these guys saw me and I was waiting for, you know, a division one offer and wanting to play college basketball, but nothing was really working out. And all of a sudden I get invited to, to go play for this team and, and, and everything changes. You know, that was a huge thing when I, um, I really asked the Lord for that and, and trusted him and he did it, you know, he showed up and, um, and then in, in all other little th ways throughout my college career at Wofford, you know, not, a year or, or whatever is perfect, right? No day's perfect. Nobody's perfect. And it's all been uh, sometimes a struggle and, and a grind. And so there's so many times that he has provided opportunities and um, just work things that, that I couldn't. And so, um, you know, ultimately it, it's cool to just look back and, and realize, man, you know, I, I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm not even supposed to be at Virginia Tech. I'm not supposed to have had this career at Wofford, you know, because, um, you know, ultimately it was just a miracle that, that I was able to be given that opportunity and um, just, you know, all of it is, is him. So, um, he should be glorified. Absolutely. He's done it all. And, um, I'm just enjoying the ride and, and thankful for it. I should also ask you, like being a lot crew, I think overall the game of basketball and athletics kind of has a more dominant role of faith. I think there's more believers than you would say typically in the worldwide aspect, but there still are a lot of guys that might not be believers or might be other religions too. So how have you learned to balance that? Cause you are outspoken Obviously, I need to come out you talk about God throughout your day-to-day -day life, too. So how have you learned to kind of balance that in a locker room, kind of in the locker room setting? And has there ever been any problems or kind of difficulties or struggles you've even had with that? Yeah, I think I definitely, you know, once getting to college, um, Campus Outreach is the organization that I've been, a uh, Christian organization I've been involved with. And they've been so instrumental in helping me uh, just learn, you know, how to uh, evangelize, how to share the gospel and how to love people. And um, really, yeah, I think at times a struggle is like, Oh, this is, this is, um, for me, this is, this is my mission. This is something like that, but, but really it's God's mission. It's God's story. And, um, I think, um, really developing a real care for people, a compassion for people, um, a compassion that I've experienced from the Lord and from other people that I've, I've experienced that, um, I've, I've felt and, um, you know, so, so loving and, and feeling compassion toward people, um, really just helps me uh, put myself in their shoes and um, and just just want them to know the love uh, God has for the the price he's paid for their sin for for their life and you know it's 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 normal conversations and just want to talk about it and so um, yeah I think it's awesome opportunities I think I've been so thankful for you know the culture that basketball uh, and the platform basketball has given me uh, just to to be that type of person and, and um, yeah I'm so thankful for the the influences that have pushed me toward that. Amen. I mean, my final thing for you, give Virginia Tech fans your three biggest goals you have set for your loan season out there. Three biggest goals. Um, yes, let's see. I would say um, win an ACC championship, mm -hmm. um, hit the Elite Eight on an awesome tournament run, um, and then throughout those uh, those those accomplishments, I think, you know, the last one would just be Castle is going to be awesome this year. It's going to be, you know, the goal is to have that thing packed out and um, full of students, full of fans. Um, Blacksburg will be rocking. So um, just be excited for that. Absolutely. It's going to be a great year. 
Shout out, out, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on today. Congrats on the big move once again, man. I'm excited to see what God's got next for you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Of course, man. You're welcome on, man. God bless. Thanks. You too.